Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. It's everybody's second favorite time of year. Not Christmas time, which means it's summertime. But unfortunately, a lot of my friends have jobs, so that means I either have to try to look for another job so I can see somebody, or just talk about an episode about the Chum Bucket. Welcome to the Chum Bucket is the episode where Spongebob has to work for Plankton at the Chum Bucket after Mr. Krabs loses Spongebob in a bet from a card game. This episode aired on January 21st, 2002, and it's the first episode from Season 2 to air in the year 2002. This is also the first time where we see a character other than Plankton and or Karen work at the Chum Bucket, which is seen a few times throughout the series, like Patrick working at the Chum Bucket in Episode 78, The Fry Cook Games from Season 2, and 238, Chum Bucket Supreme from Season 6, or Squidward working there in Episode 337, Chum Fricassee from Season 8. There's also a sad song in this episode, which is, in my opinion, the first of the very few sad songs throughout the whole series. Some other examples of sad songs in the series are Gary's song in episode 122, Have You Seen the Snail from season 4, and the Thumbs song from episode 376, Two Thumbs Down from season 9. You could make the argument that the Ripped Pants song from episode 5, Ripped Pants, or I Wanna Go Home from episode 36, Texas, are sad songs too, but I personally don't agree. I personally don't know anybody who cried from those songs, and they have better rhythms compared to the other songs I mentioned. With that in mind, I've seen people mostly talk about the song from this episode compared to anything else. Of course, a song is always one of the best things from any episode that features a song, but it's other episodes with a song that have a lot more scenes that people talk about. Whereas this one is different. People talk about the song more than anything else from this episode. So with that in mind, let's watch this episode and see how much good is in this one. So the episode starts up and the Krusty Krab was closing for the night. Mr. Krab says he was going to play cards with Plankton. Swindog was surprised that they played cards together since they were arch enemies. Mr. Krabs says they've been playing cards together for 15 years because Plankton is so bad at playing cards and Mr. Krabs always wins. So Spongebob and Mr. Krabs leave laughing, but the next morning Mr. Krabs is sad and Spongebob is still happy. Mr. Krabs said that he lost a game last night and as a result he lost Spongebob because he bet Spongebob's contract and lost the game. I've never seen Spongebob with a contract at the Krusty Krab before. Swindog didn't believe it at first, until Mr. Krabs says he doesn't work there anymore, and Swiver was surprised to hear this. Plankton arrives and says that this wasn't a joke, and gives Spongebob a chum bucket employee hat. Swindog and Mr. Krabs started to cry about Swindog not working there anymore, and Plankton separates them, saying he's been throwing the card games waiting for Mr. Krabs to slip up and make a silly bet like that. Swindog was sent off to the chum bucket, and Mr. Krabs got his arms back. Swindog finds himself in Plankton's laboratory. We see this calendar that I thought was a typo as a kid before I learned the spelling difference, and Plankton arrives demeaning Spongebob make him a Krabby Patty, or else Plankton will remove Spongebob's brain and put it in a robot chef. Does the Chum Bucket even have the ingredients to make a Krabby Patty? Plankton's kitchen was so much different than what Spongebob was used to, and he started to sing a slow song about how much he missed the Krusty Krab. And Mr. Krabs sang too, and wasn't cooking too well without Spongebob. Both of them were very sad they weren't working with each other now, and Spongebob started crying. Plankton saw that Spongebob wasn't listening to his commands, and decided to put his brain in the robot chef. Karen told Plankton that that wouldn't work, and said that he should be compassionate and understanding. Plankton ignored her, and then restated that exact idea. That's a husband and wife alright. Spongebob was trying to cook, but it wasn't going well. Plankton came up and agreed to make Spongebob more comfortable at the chum bucket. Spongebob asked for a grill, and Plankton got him just that. Spongebob asked him to move the grill all around the kitchen, and eventually he moves it all around in a circle. Later on, Plankton made an exact replica of the Krusty Krab kitchen, and Spongebob was swooned by this. Right as he's about to start cooking for Mr. Krabs, he gets sad because he misses him. I know Mr. Krabs is the manager, but Squidward's the one who gives Spongebob the order tickets. Plankton tried to make Spongebob happy, giving him mechanical shoes. But Spongebob soon figured out Plankton's plan and started asking for more various things like a sponge bath, a ride on a wheelie seahorse, and reading him a story. Plankton got frustrated and woke Spongebob up. But as Spongebob woke up, he still refused to make Krabby Patties. It turned from a calm conversation to Spongebob getting pissed. Plankton became fed up and decided to take Spongebob's brain out anyway. Later on, Plankton implanted the brain in the robot and called it Robot Bob Sponge Chef Pants. 
I think Robot Bob Chef Pants would have been a better name. Or Robot Bob Sponge Pants. But even with the brain in the robot, he still refused to make a Krabby Patty and Plankton finally snapped. Mr. Krabs was about to close the Krusty Krab for good and Plankton came up begging Mr. Krabs to take Spongebob back. Mr. Krabs agreed to take Spongebob back if Plankton gives him $50. Plankton agreed and said he cheated at the card game. He was thrown back to the chum bucket, very relieved that Spongebob was going to leave. Later on, Spongebob's brain was restored and he was back at the Krusty Krab. I believe in a world where a crab's arms can come off with a crowbar, where a burger grows an arm after being cooked, but I draw the line as a sponge losing his brain and then getting it back and still being alive. Spongebob didn't want to work again, but soon corrected himself saying he was working all day for free, leaving Mr. Krabs satisfied and the episode ends. So that was Welcome to the Chum Bucket, and I feel it's a pretty nice episode. Let's start off with the song. This Girl Is Not A Home is a beautiful song and is a really nice showcase on how much Spongebob means to Mr. Krabs and how much Spongebob misses the Krusty Krab. I will say though, songs like this, Sweet Victory from episode 70, Band Geeks, and Ocean Man from the end credits of the Spongebob Squarepants movie hit so much differently as of November 26, 2018. I have my own memories with this song. In middle school, I had a shameless crush on a girl and one year when I had no classes with her, I felt severely depressed since I didn't get to see her at all, even in the hallway. And I kept listening to this song and Gary's song from Have You Seen This Snail over and over again. Of course, I've been over that shameless crush for years at this point, and I can listen to those songs without thinking about her now. And thank God, because now I can enjoy this song for what it was set out to do. Also, fun fact number one, when Mr. Krabs sings during the song, it doesn't sound like Mr. Krabs. I even noticed this as a kid. He sounded a lot more gruff when singing in this song. Indeed, Mr. Krabs was not voiced by his usual voice actor, Clancy Brown, during this scene. He was voiced by Dee Bradley Baker, voice of Squilliam, Fancy Sun, Bubble Bass, and various background characters. I never understood why this happened. Mr. Krabs sang in episode 56, Christmas Who, and he was voiced by Clancy Brown in that scene. However, Dee Bradley Baker did indeed step in and sings Mr. Krabs' infamous high note at the end, and that made sense in my opinion. Why Brown didn't sing in this scene is beyond me. It didn't ruin the song for me, I just found it kind of strange. There's also a lot of fun character moments in this episode. I love Squidward's single line in this episode, I like how sad Mr. Krabs is when he loses Spongebob and admits that it's all his fault. I like how Plankton was willing to make Spongebob comfortable with working at the Chum Bucket, even if it was only a part of his scheme. I like the exchange between Mr. Krabs and Plankton around the end of the episode, and the end when Spongebob makes the same remark towards Mr. Krabs. It's such a mood. There's also some fun animation details in this episode I always really liked, such as when Spongebob leaves his underwear behind when he runs away at the very end, the Spongebob comic that Robot Bob's Sponge Chef Pants was reading, and the bottle cap on the ground in this shot of Plankton. Also, fun fact number two, the book Plankton reads to Spongebob in this episode is the same book from episode 52, Grandma's Kisses. On this latest rewatch, I noticed a couple subtle setup and payoffs, and I really liked finding out about them. When Plankton decided to put Spongebob's brain in the robot chef, Karen tells him that would never work, and indeed it didn't work much to Plankton's rage, because the brain knows what it wants and doesn't want to do. When Plankton is trying to cheer Spongebob up, he asks him questions like, is there anything I can do to make you more comfortable here at the Chum Bucket? Or is there anything that old skinflint crowds wouldn't let you have? After those questions, Spongebob said things that truly did make him happier, like cooking on a grill, which is how he normally cooks, or the cool shoes, which he did say he always wanted. After he got the shoes, Plankton asked him if he had everything he needed to make some Krabby Patties. It wasn't until that point when Spongebob started asking for the ridiculous requests, and later started arguing with Plankton. Spongebob was pretty clever in this episode for how he refused to make Krabby Patties for Plankton, showing how loyal he is to the Krusty Krab. It's a pretty clever story. This episode is a good showcase of Spongebob and Plankton's characters as a whole. However, I do have a few criticisms, and some of them are probably nitpicky. On this latest rewatch, I wondered if the Chum Bucket even has the ingredients to make Krabby Patties, but of course, that one breaks the plot. I wonder why Mr. Krabs would even agree to gamble SpongeBob's contract in the first place. 
But I can brush this one off more easily because Mr. Krabs was getting cocky after never losing against Plankton every Thursday night for 15 years straight. And of course, this was a part of Plankton's plan with the card games anyway. Another criticism is that I feel there wasn't a lot that was super funny to me in this episode. I would say my favorite gags are when Spongebob swats Plankton with a fly swatter in his thought cloud, and when Plankton pulls the mallet out of nowhere and throws it away. I did giggle at some other scenes, but not as many as other episodes this season. I wouldn't say this episode is boring by any means, but there could have been a few more funny jokes in this episode in my opinion. This episode has a good structure, but I feel episode 64, The Smoking Peanut, was much better in terms of having a very smart story as well as having more funny parts. But overall, I think this episode is decent. It is pretty clever, has a good song, and is a really good showcase of the characters in this episode. It's only held back by having fewer funny moments than usual for most episodes from season 2. I would also say there is more to this episode than the song. All the characters are so strong and in character in this episode, and the plot is played out in quite a smart way, and both of those are pretty good points for this episode in my opinion. Also fun fact number 3, the person on this calendar is Thaddeus Paul Cauldron, a former crew member during seasons 1, 2, 3, and the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Welcome to the Chum Bucket is a fine episode. While I think there could have been more funny parts, I think that how strong the characters are, the show tunes, and the subtle setup and payoffs are enough to redeem this one. This episode is far from unwatchable though, and while it could have been a little better, it could have been so much worse as well. With that being said, I have yet to meet anybody who was still alive after having their brain removed and then put back in their head. And I would know. It's on my bucket list.